Fun fact, I did the driver for this at 3 o'clock last night. Hi! Uh, where's my note? There, here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. Last night I've played with the Sensor Hub. What is Sensor Hub? It is a hat for your Raspberry Pi 2, 3 or 4. You can also use it with Raspberry Pi 0 series as long as you don't mind the different form factor. Now, Sensor Hub is a part of the Docker Pi series, which comes with several boards that you can that can be stacked on top of each other. Now, the first board, uh, the power board, I've actually talked about it before, and this is the power board you probably should have it on top on at the bottom of the stack because it comes with the 12 volt 4 pin adapter for every single stackable board. Now that 12 volt isn't needed to run the sensor hub, but the sensor hub comes with that pass-through, so if the next stack requires you to use that 12 volts, it's available there. Sensor Hub, as the name indicates, comes with an array of different sensors and among those you've got a thermal infrared, which can be used for motion and human detection. Uh, you have uh, air pressure, which comes with built-in actually a temperature sensor as well. There is the very familiar DHT11 for monitoring humidity and for temperature. Uh, there is a light sensor that gives you a, a value in lumens there is also external thermometer, one of these, that is capable of measuring temperatures up to 120 Celsius, so that's really, really handy. The board uses I2C to communicate with the sensors. Link to the wiki that is available online describes the register and how to interact with the sensors itself, and the page itself provides you with Python, Java and C scripts to get you started. Now, just to remember, you have to enable uh, the I2C interface in the Raspberry configuration. After playing with this board last night, I quickly discovered that if you only use the sensor hub, and especially if you use Raspberry Pi 4, temperature and humidity values will get distorted because of the heat generated by Raspberry Pi 4 uh, itself. If you are wondering how much heat Raspberry Pi 4 can actually generate, I have a video about uh, effective ways of cooling Raspberry Pi 4 and the cooling benchmarks. So go and check out this video, it's definitely worth it. So how would you combat that? First of all, you could place the sensor hub on top of the stack, giving a bit of a space between the Raspberry Pi 4 board and the heat generated by it and the temperature sensors itself. Second solution, you could use the ribbon cable like this to separate the board itself and the sensor hub. And the third solution is probably the most messy because I would suggest that you could design an individual case and consider desoldering a couple of sensors and extending them with a piece of wire to create a unique and custom project. So this is the sensor board dashboard. I didn't do anything fancy with it, but you can see um, every sensor that is available via sensor board. So we have your internal temperature, we have your barometer temperature, we have uh, uh, internal humidity, external temperature, barometric pressure, brightness, motion detection and a couple of charts showing you that you can gather that information over time. Now let's jump into the node red. I'm actually not using Python directly because uh, there is a, uh, well let's call it a hack. I had to refer to. There is no I2C node that works with Node-RED right now, so what I've used is an exec um, node instead. And what it does, it basically executes a command line and gathers all the feedback from the command line and passes it over as a message to Node-RED, and that's what I'm doing. And in order to have those sensors working with Node-RED, I had to modify the script. So this is the script itself that's been supplied by a, a wiki from sensor board. It's been slightly modified. Uh, basically, I'm just instead of passing that uh, information as a printout, I generate a dictionary first and then convert that dictionary into a JSON, print it out, and that way Node-RED knows what's what. You can see these are the messages that you're going to receive and they are nicely formatted so you could know uh, how to use all those sensors. So a couple of points uh, in here. Now the first, uh, the exit node comes with three outputs. The first is for the correct 
message the other two are for errors so obviously i'm interested really in the correct messages uh, there are sensor reporting statuses so you're gonna have information about the uh, for example the internal sensor the barometric sensor and external sensor and they're going to report whether the sensor is operational, whether it's out of range or, or not operational. Uh, so I've separated these messages. Uh, if you want, you can use the errors as well. I'm just obviously passing the information over only if it's uh, viable. And then lastly, I can do a couple of conversions. So for here, I convert the value to hectopascals. And for motion, I just change the color and name on the button. So that's pretty much it in. Uh, gouges I've got, uh, what you have to do is just a pass correct message type, uh, so in this case I'm passing brightness, so I take the brightness in here, the easiest way to do is just to go to the value, click on that copy path, and then uh, select that after a message, you can copy and paste it, that's it. So that's pretty much it. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you want to have a chart, you need to specify the value and the topic. So for each message, like for example, um, for the internal temperature, I'm just going to add the topic internal temperature. If I've got parametric temperature, then I'm going to add the topic parametric temperature. That way you're going to have three different lines uh, corresponding with three different data sets. Uh, the, um, you know this refreshed every five seconds, you can uh, just submit empty payloads to exec. Uh, I'm afraid now not to get flooded on the side of set it to 30, but by default it's 5 seconds, mostly because I wanted to have the information about the motion trigger as well, and the motion trigger remains active for 5 seconds. So that's pretty much everything, and if you're interested in downloading this and downloading the code itself, uh, then just take a look at the description of this video and you'll find the link to the article. The article will contain all that information for you. I'm already thinking about Sensor Hub 2 because I would like to see all those sensors being available on some sort of pin so you can just connect them and detach them from the board itself to avoid thermal issues. Now if you want to get started there is a link in the description for the Node-RED and the Python modified Python script that you can use together and give this sensor board a go. As for now guys, I'll let you know I do not have a posting schedule, so you probably know how YouTube works and how the notification system of YouTube works as well, I'm not going to teach you that. Well, I'm going to tell you that I do have a social pages where I post the updates whenever I post an article without a video, so if you're interested in that, just follow me on the social media of your choice to get instant updates. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care!